Hey everybody, this is the last episode of Season 4. Um, we're going to basically do a quick passivation of the stainless steel arch. Then I'm going to take a sail over to the haul out yard and uh, get hauled out. Enjoy the show. Well, that's a lot easier bottom shooting than up the water. We had 40 to 50 knots last night in the middle of the night on gusts, only gusts. We had 30 knots gusting to 40, gusting to 50. Anyways, I got here and my bimini is broke, or my lines tying to the boat to the dock uh, were broke. Uh, it looks like uh, the wind blew that pedestal over and water was streaming out everywhere. A neighbor went over there and shut the water off. My antenna, or not my antenna, but my flag holder, my flag pole, it actually uh, broke off. And uh, it was just hanging by the flag. I didn't lose my flag, thank goodness. But uh, I was like, oh, that's a lot of wind. Anyway, so uh, this thing here stripped. It pulled so hard that the, um, the little hex th screw thing uh, bent. And then this thing came, got separated. And I don't know if it made a dent or what there, but... Anyways, I'm going to fix this up by, um, uh, I'm basically going to drill a hole in the bar and then I'm just going to fish a feeder screw through. And while I'm busy repairing this, um, I just wanted to thank everybody for watching these videos and supporting the channel. Um, getting close to being able to get cruising. It, uh, I've still got another set of projects that I need to get done, so I might need one more year, but... Um, getting close and then I intend on bringing the boat down to the Maritimes and uh, then uh, taking it down south so um, hopefully you stick around on the channel as we get there and uh, you know if you like these videos please give me a thumbs up it helps it helps out a lot and uh, subscribe to the channel would be awesome and if you know for those that want to support me a little bit more uh, I have a patreon uh, page as well This just keeps it from wobbling. It's one of the things I found when I uh, had the bimini. This, the back part wobbles a bit in the wind. So I just tighten this here and that's basically taken out all of the shake. It's just good enough to stop it from moving around so much. And then anytime the wind comes in and gives it a good shake, it doesn't break it apart like it did last night. It's been a couple years like that. so. I think it's not unreasonable to have to fix something uh, that lasts that long. But anyways, you can see my screw's a bit long here. So I'll uh, try either cut the screw or... I guess I could do that. I got my grinder, so I could just cut the screw later. But for now, that's good enough. Hey everybody, so uh, we've got a kind of like a tidy up project from the solar arch um, because I did a lot of welding. Um, I didn't actually do something called passivating. Uh, so where there might be some hot spots where the welds were, um, it might have a tendency to rust uh, over a period of time because of um, when you weld it, I guess it, it heats the metal up pretty hot at certain points and it actually realigns the uh, the chemicals in the stainless steel. So there's something called passivating. I think it's a per per persivating passivating. Um, and what you do is you rub it down it, naturally in stainless steel. For the way I understand it, is that there's chromium oxide, and that's actually what makes it resist rust. And then so when you weld, you can actually uh, create little misalignments in this chromium oxide. So what you do is you use citric acid and you wash down the stainless steel with it and uh, kind of at the end what ends up happening is you have a um, it helps bring out the chromium oxide 
uh, back. It kind of like uh, realigns the metal somehow. So I don't know how long to leave it on or anything like that. So I'm just going to wash it while I'm doing some packing here on the boat and uh, let it sit for a bit. And then I'm going to take the hose and I'm just going to hose it off with some uh, fresh water. Windy. Anyway, so this is the product that I'm using. It's just uh, citric acid. I bought it on, on Walmart. Actually, I bought it online because I couldn't find it in the local food stores here. Um, and citric acid, I guess they use it for um, uh, pers uh, preserva preservations, pres preservatives. Is uh, I think what they use it for for canning and they put it in all kinds of food and everything. Anyways, this is food grade. It's nothing fancy. I'm just going to add some water. Give it like a. Uh, fairly hefty um, concentration, like probably I'm going to do about 40%, I think, is what I'm going to try. And uh, and that's basically just so I have some liquid to rub around, and then I'm just going to go with a rag and, like I said, just wipe it on everywhere and uh, give, it a, give it a good scrub. I'm going to wear, find some gloves first. So I'm just doing this uh, with the utility bucket, some water and citric acid, that's about it. And I'm using these gloves, hopefully they hold up. Gloves seem to be holding up, silicon gloves, so it's good. I'll go give this a try. So um, it's saying that um, I should actually let the acid uh, sit on it before rinsing any of the residual um, thing and some people leave it overnight. I, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to maybe leave it on for an hour and then I'll rinse it off. I don't think I want to leave it on that long just in case but I'll, I'll take a look at how it's doing. I can see sort of like a shadow now uh, or um, like a film. So they just when the air dry it, it takes about 20 minutes for it to kick in. So I, I don't think that it, I need to leave it there that long. So I'm just gonna, like I said, just rinse it off there, and then we'll see what happens. My eyes are right, by the way. I just rinsed it off there in the uh, in the tap. It's uh, windy today. I got uh, the last thing I think that I want off the boat here until um, I haul out, which is tomorrow. Uh, Monday I can bring it or I can bring it Tuesday. They let me uh, they said that if I brought it at noon I'd be able to go in earlier tomorrow, but uh, so I'll just take a look and see how the weather is. If it's fine, I'll go um. So I guess I'll be the last kind of view from the slip It's pretty windy Right now we've got uh, 10 11 knots coming in F3 20.5 knots gusts 12 11 uh, so probably good to go sailing actually <laughs> but uh, I'm going to uh, finish off I guess on the inside so pretty much so I've emptied the uh, the galley pretty much everything I just kept one pot so I can make some tea and I cleared out the V-berth, I cleared out everything underneath the V-berth, all the sails, everything underneath the SETI. Um, I took out the uh, the wood in the quarter berth. And uh, so now I'm going to get ready to do some fiberglassing. Got this still here left to do, fiberglass in. Um, I ended up changing my circuit breaker. It's a small thing here, but uh, this circuit breaker uh, was 40 amps and it should be 30 amps 
I, ch I did pick one up and uh, it arrived after a bit late, but I uh, did put that in. And then uh, I also put in the uh, the split uh, Orion TR4812. So these are nine amps each, and when you put them in parallel, um, they basically can be uh, 18 amps now. And I found that with the fridge on, everything on, uh, kind of like everything that I would be running, fans, lights, and if the fridge kicked in while I was running the liquid cooling, I was like right on the edge of 9 amps. I might have been 10, 11 amps. So I said, okay, well, I've got to get um, another one of those units. And you could put, uh, I don't know, an indefinite amount of them in parallel, I guess. But uh, they basically just act like a parallel uh, DC-DC converter that takes 48 volts, converts it to 12. And it only has a 9 amp output. So if I need another one, I can put one in and I don't have to change the circuit breaker. So that'll give me 27 amps, and then I've got a 30 amp um, circuit breaker. And that's basically these two things here, devices. So I've got room for one more. Uh, so I think I, can, I can't foresee myself needing more than 30 amps DC. So that's like my radio and uh, my VHF radio, um, chart plotter instruments. Um, I suppose if I did a DC-based uh, water maker, uh, that might need a fair amount for the pumps um, but I'm not going to do that I'm going to run that on the AC side I think but we'll see still working out what to do I might just do a portable one actually I noticed that um, there's a company that makes a little portable one that looks like a generator and then I can kind of pack it away put it away and then when I want it take it out uh, make some water with it that might be a better way to go so we'll just because of space savings my boat's not that big uh, but anyways, yeah, I'm working on this here still. I've got to do a, another little window door for that uh, cutout um, after I finish fi fiberglassing. So I've still got a fair amount to do here, um, which I'm going to get done over the winter. <laughs> it's got some work to do right now, just an empty room. So that's a whole, that's a whole thing in there, but uh, I'll get at it. Um, and then up here in the V-Birth, uh, this right here is going to be a nice cupboard, uh, drop-down cupboard going along there, and I'm going to build another one. So I'm going to take my grinder and I'm going to cut this piece off right here, all the way down, and then I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to put it at the same distance. It's interesting when they made this boat here, the original manufacturer, Hughes, this is about 8 inches from the wall. So when you, when you drop something down on the front of it, uh, you've got basically about, um, I don't know, maybe pretty close to a foot depth um, and then it runs from bulkhead to bulkhead this one here they didn't do that they just had like kind of a trim and as you can see I don't know why they did that because it's uh, um, this is the stanchion bolt so it's kind of like awkward I'm just gonna cut it out bring it out the same 8 to 10 inches from the wall and I'm gonna build the same cupboards here so I have cupboards on both sides and uh, yeah, that'll give me a little bit more storage, right? This is basically what finished will look like. Uh, so I've got a little bit done. I've got the starboard and the port side cupboards done. Uh, the deck is done. This is done. I just need one layer of paint and uh, tie it into the floor and the bulkhead here on the front is left. So I finished this this summer. And now that the boat's coming out, I'm going to get onto the fiberglassing before it gets too cold. Let's see. Any day that's more than 10 degrees, I'm going to work on it. Um, yeah, and uh, appreciate you watching. Thanks for another season, and uh, I've got some good projects coming in. As you can see here, this is my project board. So quite a few things to do still. So uh, some simple things like spice rack, uh, and then more complex things like uh, autopilot. So uh, it'll be a good uh, winter full of projects and. Uh, and do it yourself so thanks for watching i really appreciate all your comments makes me think just documenting my journey here on the channel and uh, sharing what i learned so uh, appreciate it and uh, have fun out there Launch, launch day? No, um, haul out day. 
I just wanted to report my uh, flagpole had actually cracked right in half here in that last windstorm that we had. So I just uh, shaved off the bottom and uh, yeah, we got our flag back. Can't sail without a flag, right? Anyways, uh, today is the haul out. Uh, they gave me a call, said that they're pretty light so I can go over any time. Uh, so I've got the, you can see over there, the wind on the flag heading against me. It's uh, five to 10 knots range. It's five over here, but it's probably more like 10 knots over there. Water looks a little wavy, so it'll be chilly and blowing a little bit. Kind of like uh, optimal sailing weather. So yeah, just wanna, uh, looking forward to the sail. Thank, thank the big guy upstairs for giving me some good conditions on my haul out day. And um, I've got, you can see here, there's no boats left. It's pretty empty. And he said there's two people coming out and I think they already went over because there was a boat here and he's gone. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna sail up and uh, I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up because of the way the wind's coming. It's actually not in my favor. It's kind of almost a headwind. It's a little bit on the side, so, but I don't think I can reach that far. So I'll need to go more over into the middle of the lake. And uh, so which means I'll have to tack out, go this way, tack out really long and then I'll be able to come across, um, or not the lake, but the harbor, come across the harbor uh, at a much better angle. And uh, yeah, it's getting cold. So uh, 52 degrees is the water temperature. Yeah, 625 nautical miles this year, this season. So did a fair amount of sailing, which is great. And uh, right now it's just F1, seven knots of wind. So it's pretty, Easy peasy, as long as everything works right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll, we'll undo and Covers we'll... off, uh, got the halyards on. Um, just gotta take these last couple things off and uh, trim up, trim up the blue halyard. Okay, it's the nice thing about those uh, clutches they stay snug so you can just pull them and uh, they just kind of stay where they're going to be. And we saw hopefully the battery lasts long enough to get me out of the, the marina here. But uh, we've got some good wind, five to seven knots right now. So I suspect I'll have seven to ten, maybe even higher um, as I get out there. And uh, we'll see how, how things go. Last sail to the shipyard uh, where we're going to haul out uh, this aft.
and uh, we got eight knots apparent. Last sail of the season, it's uh, plus seven to the Celsius, so it's a chilly wind. It's coming from the east today, and uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, we're doing eight knots. Oh, stuff's falling over. Wind shifts are happening. I got eight knots of wind and we're doing uh, six knots of boat speed here now. We sped up a little bit with the wind there in that last gust. Now we've got 10 knots of wind on the on the nose. 10, yeah, 11. So that's the gust going on. And in behind me, we got some ships. You can see them there, but uh, there's three ships in the harbor. And I'm just making a beeline for uh, the hollow, which is sort of over here, okay, over there. So, last sail and uh, taking advantage of it uh, as I can. A catamaran in here, first time. I haven't seen a catamaran uh, in here in I don't know what that was, four and a half, five years now. Four years? Four years, right? This is my fifth year. Yeah. It's a nice, uh, it's a Lagoon 38, I guess. I don't know what kind of boat that is, but uh, just meaning if it's a owner version or a charter boat or something. I don't know, I haven't seen one like this way yet. It's got some nice davit lifts, lifts on it and things, eh? Nice looking boat. Well, almost done here, but uh, this is my final resting spot. And uh, I would do my sail. I didn't do much of a sail here today, just uh, then I went up around, did a little tack, and then motored in that last quarter of the way. Um, batteries were fine. Everything looked good. Uh, the wind that we had, we had 
10 knots of wind max, so not pretty, pretty basic. Max boat speed, six knots. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna turn off uh, these uh, instruments now for the winter. And uh, like I said, I don't think I'm gonna have anybody on my side because of the masts here. The masts are all there, but I don't like the way the boat is leaning right now. I kind of feel like uh, it could use a, a, a support bracket, so I think I'm going to come back later and then just put a couple of shims underneath the, the left side here. I'll take a scope my pump jack, raise it up just a little bit so that I can uh, uh, slip something in and just try to level the boat a bit. What I did was I took my pump jack, I'll show you on the other end, and I put a bar inside the post and I just jacked it up. I've got a six ton uh, jack, which is 12,000 pounds actually. So I was able to lift it up and then I put some wedges in and they look like they're all, they're all looking good. And then uh, over here, there's an example. I just put the, the jack with the bar in there and let the, just the tip of it sticking out and I just pumped it up and I added an extra inch to it and it's looking a lot more level now. So we we'll take a look. You know, I might even be able to go up a smidgen more but I'm not going to worry about it. I think that's good enough for now. Well, we've got a nice uh, full moon here. November 8th. And uh, yeah, that's about it. We've got a packed car. Jeep here, just full. Yeah, I'm dumpster diving, sort of. And I'm trying to find jugs. His dad calls them. Except I just realized I'm not tall. Yeah. <laughs> See it coming.